Well, First Timothy chapter one. I'm going to just read about uh, five verses, and then just I'm going to just graze this morning. Just pray that I can feed the flock. I, uh, my sinuses came back to visit me last night, and boy, you can probably hear it. And I'm going to tell you what I've had a real battle this winter with them, and uh, I'm going to try not to holler and hoot and yell and stuff. Okay, verse number twelve. Everybody there, say Amen. amen. And I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord. Let's go back to verse 11. According to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust. Now, remember, he's, here is Paul talking to Timothy. And uh, the main theme of this book is behaving ourselves in the house of God, uh, the ministry, the work of the ministry. It said, according to the glorious gospel, the blessed God, which was committed to my trust, I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, who hath enabled me, for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry, who before was a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious. But I obtained mercy, because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. You ought to underline the fact that God's grace is exceeding abundant with faith and love. God's got enough for you which is in Christ Jesus. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. Howbeit for this cause I obtained, underline it, mercy, that in me first Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering for a pattern, underline it, a pattern, to them which should hereafter believe. That's us, isn't it? On him to, ever, to life everlasting. Now unto the King, eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Father, pray this morning that you'd help us to feed the flock. Lord, I am so like the man in Luke chapter 18 who came at midnight and knocked on the door. He said, I've got friends and they're on a journey and I have nothing to set before them. And Lord, you said because of his importunity, man arose and gave him such as he had need. Lord, this morning these folks and these friends of mine are on a journey toward eternity. Amen. God, I need bread to give them this morning, and I have nothing to give them unless you give it to me. But Lord, I in faith ask and expect to receive today that you'll feed us from the Word of God. I pray that you'll feed the souls of thy people. Fill them this morning. Give us a hunger and a thirst after righteousness. And give us truth and sustenance for our journey of life. For the trials, for the troubles, for the tribulation, for the problems, for the disagreements, for the irritations, for the aggravations, for the misunderstandings, for the things, Lord, that we don't understand, for the confusion. God, give us light for the journey, I pray, and sustenance in our spirits and souls. And God, you have said that you've not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And so, God, as you pour your word and your spirit into our lives today, I pray that you'll give us good, sound minds and clear thinking hearts that we'll know the days in which we live and be as the men of Issachar who knew what to do in the times when they lived. I pray, God, today that you'll give a great contentment to this flock of thy people. I pray that you'll give them not only contentment, Lord, but that you'll give them courage in every trial that they face. I pray, Lord, that you'll give us faith to know, Lord, that you have our best in mind, that you'll never leave us nor forsake us, that you are working all things out for good to them that love the Lord, that called according to your purpose. God, this morning I would ask you again, keep every marriage in this church together. Pray, God, nobody divorce in this church. I pray, God, keep every father's heart turned to his children and the children's heart to their fathers. God, lest you smite these families with a curse. I pray, Lord, for those that aren't able to be with us today, that you'd watch over them, protect them, and guide them. Lord, we love you today. We thank you for this testimony. We thank you for the singing. We thank you for the substitutionary death of Christ, the lesson in Bible class this morning. God, may we hang our souls for eternity upon that, that great nail in the holy place that our Lord Jesus Christ was nailed to the cross in our place and suffered for us. 
And I pray, God, that that great doctrinal truth of the Bible would be drilled and anchored and settled, Lord, in the souls of all of us today. Lord, we love you in Jesus' name. Amen. I want us to look at just a few words here, just kind of like if I was home reading and just thinking and meditating. But in verse number 11, it says, according to the glorious gospel. The glorious gospel. Underline glorious there today. I went to old Brother Webster and I. You know, the gospel means good news. Isn't that right? The gospel means good news. And the Bible said it's not only good news, but it's glorious good news. I looked at Webster, and he said that glorious means illustrious. Amen? And it is an illustrious good news. He said it's a splendorous, uh, splendor. It's majestic. It means noble. It means renowned, excellent. It means clear. It means clean. It means bright. And it means shining. And do you know that's what the gospel of Jesus Christ is? It is not some lodge secret. It is not some Mormon tabernacle secret. The gospel is clear and wide open and open and glorious to anybody that will listen to it. God doesn't say to preach in the corner somewhere. He said, shout it to the hilltops. And it is a glorious gospel. And I've got a glorious gospel this morning to preach and to share with people. And you do too. You do too. You've got a glorious gospel. Don't you be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation. And you know what? This glorious gospel, I've got a glorious gospel because I've got a glorious Savior. I've got a glorious Savior. Amen. You know what? I talked to him this morning. He took time to talk to me. Did he you? I've got a glorious Savior who came down from heaven and allowed himself to be made flesh, born of a poor virgin, lived a simple life, died on a rugged tree. I'm telling you something. You talk about a glorious Savior, one who would condescend to come down from heaven, who created and spoke this world into existence, but came down and laid in a manger, walked these old dusty roads of this earth, walked among us, and then gave a sinless life for our sins, was buried in a borrowed tomb, and on the third day, this glorious Savior had experienced a glorious resurrection. Now, you don't get no more glorious than that, as far as I'm concerned. Came up out of that tomb with a glorified body. And you know what? He's not only a glorious Savior. I think, Donnie, I'm glad you taught on that this morning. He's a glorious substitute. I've got a glorious gospel because I've got a glorious Savior who is a glorious substitute. He died in my place. I don't have anything else this morning but Him. I'm not trusting on Reggie Kelly in any shape or form. In fact, if I was, I'd just like Dad used to say, get a summer, sh- fan, a summer, fa- summer shirt on and a fan in my hand because I'd be headed to a hotter climate. I don't have anything but this glorious stuff. But he died in my place for my sin, and that's enough. And to me, that's glorious this morning. And I don't care if it's slick outside or, or what it's doing. It's still glorious to me today. He's glorious Savior and a glorious substitute, and he's a glorious sacrifice. He died and paid the, paid the penalty in full. There's nothing else to be paid. If His blood don't take care of my sin, I wouldn't know what else to do, would you? But it's a glorious sacrifice. It's a glorious redemption. He bought me out of the marketplace of sin, redeemed me unto Himself. It's a glorious salvation. It's a glorious forgiveness. Boy, aren't you glad that we're forgiven. Really, honestly forgiven. You know, the truth about us is we don't really forgive each other really good, do we? We kind of filed away just in case we might need it on them later. But you know, God said He's forgiven us of our sins. Be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that unto you by this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. The forgiveness of sins. You know what? I don't want to drag you back in a, in a, in a sinkhole this morning, but if you'll think about the worst sorry thing you've ever done. If you've trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior, God has forgiven you of that sin. And there's something you need to always remember, that through the blood of Jesus Christ, we're forgiven of our sins. It's a glorious, glorious gospel to know, tell people that you can be forgiven of your sin. I'm telling you, there are people all over this nation, you know what they need? They don't need rehabilitation. They don't need reformation. They don't need some place to go to. They need their sins forgiven. They don't, need a better, they don't need a better environment. They don't need a better education. They don't need a better house. They don't need a better car to drive. They don't need even need help from the government. They need forgiveness of their sin. And I'm telling you what a glorious gospel that we have. All my sins are gone. They're gone. He remembers them against us no more. 
You better get a hold of that and believe it, because let me tell you something I found out by visiting with people and reading the stories of people who've died on their deathbed. Did you know the devil is so mean, so cruel, that you can be dying, and he'll try to drag your past sins up and tell you you're not forgiven. And you remember the day you're lying on your deathbed or wherever you may be. If he lies to you about that, don't you tell him according to the Word of God Almighty, your sins are forgiven through the blood of Jesus Christ. And he remembers them against you. And I'll tell you what old brother B.R. Lakin used to say, if my sins are upon him, they're not upon me. And I thank God for that this morning. And I just want to joy our glorious gospel that we have. Our gospel is glorious because it's complete. Amen. It's, it's absolutely a complete. It does it all. It takes care of everything. It takes care of it all. The forgiveness of sins, the reconciliation, the regeneration. It takes care of the resurrection. It takes care of the new body. It takes care of the home in heaven. Our salvation has got it all. I'm going to get excited if I don't watch it. Be careful. Pray for me. I'm fixing to get excited. Preaching about this glorious gospel. My throat don't need it. My salvation is gospel is glorious because it's eternal. The glorious gospel is eternal. It's a glorious gospel because it's forever. We have a glorious gospel because we're going to have a glorified body. Not going to know we need those little things anymore. Amen? Amen. Went and got them little rascals this week. It cost so much, I'm going to wear them. <laughs> ain't cause don't li- ain't cause I like them, but it cost so much, I'm going to wear get some use out of them. Ain't going to need it. You know what? My ears are getting where it can't hear good and, and all kinds of stuff. Won't be no sinuses in heaven. Amen? Amen. Don't, you, don't you look forward to a glorified body? You know what? I feel sorry for Christians who don't look forward to a glorified body. I mean, that'd be stupid. I mean, that's what it's all about. God's going to give us a glorified body like in the fashion, like in His glorious body. And it'll not know sin. It'll not know sin. You know what somebody said? There ain't going to be no tombstones in heaven. There ain't going to be no hospitals. The nursing homes will be out of business. I mean, the lawyers will be out of business. And I don't know. I hope I get to preach some up in heaven, but I don't know. Maybe out. Old B.R. Lakin, you said he's going to gather a bunch of them up in the corner and not let them get loose till he can preach at them. But let me tell you this much. we got a glorious gospel. Let me just enjoy yourself this morning. Would you do that? You're going to have a glorified body like unto Jesus. It won't worry. You won't have to go through that door to go someplace. You'll just be. Jesus just came through the door. He just went up. I won't need an airplane to get somewhere. I, I can just fly. Amen. You say you don't believe that. Well, you don't believe. That's your trouble. You don't believe nothing. That's why you ain't got a smile on your heart this morning. While well, you get to thinking, I won't need a helicopter or a little fan on my back. I'll just go. Amen. That's right. I, you, I, how many believes that? Yeah. It's the truth. Now, if that ain't glorious gospel, I don't know what a glorious gospel is this morning. But anyway, you know, I thought, what was I said, I'll tell you what, the bone, how many's got a bone or two that ain't working just right? But I'll tell you what, all the most sinews and bones and knee joints and, and, and the elbow joints and the finger joints and how many's getting a little bit of Arthur Biz in you? And that old finger's curling up a little bit. And I'll tell you what, you'll have, it'll be like a child, man. Amen. New glorified body. New glorified body. I like it. Then there's a glorious coming. He's coming back in the clouds. We're going to receive this. Man, you talk about a glorious coming. We come up out of the old graves. We're translated those who are here. And we're translating. We meet the Lord together in here. That's glorious to me. I mean, can you imagine being about 15,000 foot up in the air right now? Saying so long. So long. Can you imagine seeing Jesus right now? We're going to see him. The Bible said... We're going to see Him as He is. Behold, beloved, now are we the sons of God. And it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when we shall see Him, we shall be like Him. For we shall see Him as He is. Glory. Amen. Glory. You know, I think we need to get our eyes off of this old world just a little bit. Amen. Anybody been lied to this week or done wrong or things didn't turn out just right or you had three bills you should have, you didn't think you was going to get or you didn't get some money you thought you was going to or you stubbed your toe or you burnt your finger. I mean, get your mind off all that. Amen. We're going to one of these days leave it out of here and we're going to see a glorious Savior, a glorious coming, a glorious resurrection. Man, oh man, oh man. Uh, Sister Vivian Hart just handed me a picture of my father-in-law that was taken years ago. Was that, where was that picture taken? At your place. And you know something? There's going to be a glorious meeting. It's going to be a glorious meeting. Uh, it's, it's good to see Sister Donna's sister with us today. I'm sure the roads is pretty impassable down there. But you know you're going to see your daddy again. be a glorious meeting, won't it? Brother Roy Gray. I'll get to meet my father-in-law again. Karen said once, 
out, out from our kitchen windows a tree and a little garden, a little, a little flower bed she made there. And in that little flower bed is where we buried our baby that we lost. And uh, Karen said this. She said, you know, Karen, you have to help me out on this. But she said, uh, uh, Jim didn't get to meet Susanna. But Jim got to meet the other one. He's acquainted with one that we're not acquainted with. And we're acquainted with one that he's not acquainted with. But someday there's going to be a glorious resurrection and a glorious reunion. And we'll get to see each other. Brother Hicks, there'll be a reunion. You won't be sitting in glory land by yourself on Sunday up there. And we need to get a hold of these things. Folks, listen, life is going by so fast. Isn't it? How many members when you as a kid? Don't take long to get where you got, does it? I've said this, I'm 55. If the next 55 goes as fast as the first 55, we're going to be 110 before we can know what happened to us. But you know it's going by fast. I enjoy every day. I'll tell you, I'm so blessed up one side and down the other, I can't understand it. But I tell you what, I still look forward to that glorious resurrection, that glorious appearing, and meeting my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And we're going to be like the old apostle Thomas. And we're going to be able to look in his hands and his side and see the spear marks and the nail marks. And we're going to see the lash marks on his back where he suffered for our sins. And the reason we're going to get to see this glorious resurrection and glorified body is because of a glorious Savior who suffered for our sins. We're going to have a glorious home. Jesus said, I go away and prepare a place for you. A home in glory. No taxes. No insurance. No repairs. No windows are leaking. No roofs are leaking. No termites. Amen. It'll pass inspection. Amen. It'll pass inspection. Got a glorious home. You ever think about it? We're just going to be here for, what, 70 years at the max, maybe 80 or 90 years if God's good to us that way. But you know what? For all of eternity, you're going to have a glorious home. Just as well, listen, don't drive your tent stakes too deep. You're not sticking around here too long. Amen. Going home one of these days. A glorious home. It said, that will guide me with thy counsel and receive me to glory. Well, we're going to have a glory, glorious. It, this gospel makes for a glorious relationship. You know what? It's good to me to be able to kneel by my bed and talk to my Lord. It's good for me to drive down the road and be able to talk to my Jesus. He walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I'm his own. I'm telling you something. It's good to have a glorious relationship that even though you may have failed and though you may have done that which you didn't want to do and didn't think you ever would do, that he says, my mercy is new every morning. I've got a God that never sells up on me. <laughs> Your spouse may, but he won't. got a glorious relationship in Jesus Christ. He's my father. My, I have a relationship, Abba, Father. God wants to teach you a lot of stuff about himself it was by having a good godly home, folks. And if you didn't have the privilege of climbing up on your daddy's lap and knowing that all was well and that you were loved and everything was okay, you missed out on understanding what God the Father is, and I hope you'll get there someday. But I had a home where I could climb up on my daddy's lap, and I had the concept of what it meant to have a father. And let me tell you a little something this morning. That's why the devil's after marriages and homes, and that's why he's after the institution of marriage, and that's why he's after people like... Because he does not want these little kids growing up knowing what it is to have a daddy. And he wants their concept of fatherhood to be so messed up that they can't even conceive what it would be to have a heavenly father that loves them unconditionally. And it's going to protect them and provide for them and take them through. And have that security and have that sweetness of that relationship. I've got a glorious gospel because I have a glorious relationship. But I tell you what, I'm going to have a glorious presence someday. I'm going to be right in the presence of Almighty God. You know, one of these days, folks, we're going to see the throne. We're going to see the throne. We're going to see it. Job said, I shall behold with my eyes and not another. The worms 
destroy this body. He said, I'm going to see him with my eyes. And we're going to be in his presence. You know what the Bible said? And so shall we ever be with the Lord. If that ain't glory, I don't know what is. Don't go to hell. Amen? Don't go to hell. It's a glorious. You know what is amazing? In the Old Testament, the Jewish people, God took them out of the land of, of Egypt. And you know what he did? He put a presence with them. He put the glory cloud. Remember it? He put the glory over them. Buddy, I'm going to tell you something. That's a wonderful thing to have the glory of God. And everywhere they went and everything they did, the glory of God was with them. But you know what? I hate to tell you that I got something better. They had the glory over them. I've got the glory in me. The Holy Ghost was what was traveling with them. The presence of Almighty God in that tabernacle. Bless your heart. When I got saved and received Jesus Christ as my Savior, the Bible teaches me and I know from experience and fact that the Holy Ghost of God indwelt my spirit. And I'm telling you, he made a new man in here. And there's somebody new living inside this old body. And I've got the presence of Almighty God, the glory of God. Let me tell you something. It's in you if you're saved. God dwelling in you. Christ in you, the hope of glory. The Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit indwelling your body. Live with that knowledge. Understand and enjoy and work with that glory. Well, you know what sin will do? Sin will destroy glory. Did you know Adam and Eve had the glory? They were, Listen, tell you something, folks. They didn't have those animal skins on them before they sinned. They were clothed in the bright glory of God. But you know what happened when sin came? Sin will take glory away. And you know what you can have? You can have a glorious marriage and you let sin get into it and the glory will be gone. You can have a glorious family and home. You let sin get in there and you keep that TV running and I'm telling you, pretty soon the glory will move. A church can have the glory of God on it. And if a church doesn't walk straight with God and keep this Bible preached and keep this Bible taught and let God be God, I'm telling you, God will move His glory on He'll be like Ichabod. He'll just walk outside that church. The angel got to turn around and write Ichabod on the front door, and everybody walks in here, and it means the glory of God has departed. It happens to churches all the time. Don't you young boys ever forget that. You keep the glory of God on this place. And you do it by getting up here and singing and by getting down there and praying and by walking in here with the glory of God on you. And if you've got the glory of God on you, the glory of God will be on this church. Well, let's look at the next word I found in there. It said, according to the glorious gospel of the, underline it, blessed God. Mm, I like that adjective. You start doing what Psalms 103 does. David said, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that's within me, bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits. And you just say that every day of your life. Every day of your life. Every day of your life. You get in the car, you drive down and say, Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. And all that's within me, bless His holy name. You know what? God is worthy of your blessing. And you need to bless the Lord. He's a blessed God, Paul told Timothy. Paul said, Timothy, He's blessed. Amen. And you ought to bless Him. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. How many? Right, now, we're going to have a practice session. Let's try it. You just try it. Amen. You ain't doing too bad. Now, I mean, you, what, what, wonder what the checkout counter Walmart does it. And she checked you up and it come out $5 more than you thought. You said, bless the Lord, oh, my soul. And all that's with it. You know what? What, what happened if, to, if pe- people we worked around just every once in a while just talking to the machines and said, bless the Lord, oh, my soul. Just walk around talking to God. When something bad happens, say, bless the Lord, oh, my soul. And all that's within me. Bless this holy name. You ought to start blessing the Lord. Another thing with bless the Lord is to bless means to pronounce a benefit. To express a desire for good. I mean, to want peace. You know, what is a peace and, and, and even prosperity? Now, I'm going to tell you something. The world's definition of prosperity is not God's definition of prosperity. But you know what? Blessing can be in the right kind of prosperity. You know, sometimes prosperity can be a curse. But we're talking about prospering in the Lord. We're talking about being happy. I think children are a blessing. Amen. I'm going to tell you something. Children are a blessing. But there's, there's a bunch of kids that go to this church that were babies whenever I was started preaching. Now, they start having kids, and I tell you what, you talk about it. That is such a blessing to see them coming in with their kids. 
coming in with their kids. You know, kids that was babies when you started preaching, and they're coming in with their kids. And that is the sweetest, sweetest blessing. So I think children are blessing. But to bless is to cause success. Deuteronomy 15, that Moses said, The Lord God shall bless thee in all that thou doest. Now, there's sometimes blessings in the Bible were conditional, but you know what? I want to ask you a question. Have you ever blessed your kids? If you haven't, you ought to think about it. You really ought to think about it. They did it in the Bible. Laid hands on them, blessed them. And it worked. Still working. Still working. To bless means to make happy in a future life. Revelation 14 said, Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord. God said that's a blessing. Blessing also means to set apart and to consecrate to holy purposes. In Genesis chapter 2, God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it. So there's some blessings that are just, you know, you want to bless, that means you desire good and happiness and prosperity to somebody. Then there's this blessing that, that uh, th- in a future life, but then there's a blessing that you bless something to sanctify and consecrate it to the Lord. Now let me say this to you. True, really, blessing is true riches without sorrow. You remember that song? When upon life's billows you are tempest-tossed. When you are discouraged, thinking all is lost, count your many blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord hath done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God hath done. Count your blessings, Name them one by one. Count your many blessings. See what God has done. You know why I think God takes away those false worldly blessings sometimes so we can really get our eyes fixed on what is truly a blessing? I was thinking this morning about my blessings and I couldn't help but think about the little, that little silver-haired woman of mine. I'll tell you what, she goes and gets that dyed like that about every two months. <laughs> they get it the same every time. No, I'm lying. Karen is such a blessing to me. Amen? Boy, ain't I blessed? Amen. Karen, you're a blessing to me. Then I got to thinking about the privilege of working with my children. I am one of the most blessed men you've ever laid your eyes on. I work with Nathan, Zach, Ben, Hannah, Sarah. And even get a little work out of Susanna once in a while. No, she's still in school. But you know what? We're all working together. All get to see each other. Walk in the office up there. How you doing? Good to see you. Maybe. You know, get to share the joys and the sorrows together. Most Monday mornings, me and the boys will meet back there in a room somewhere and sit down a little bit, talk things over, and then bow our heads and pray and ask God to help us this week. Now, you won't get any better blessing than that, folks. If I could wish a blessing on you young men that are getting married here today, I would tell you this, that you ever have a bunch of kids you can sit down and pray with, that's a blessing. My daughters, my mom and daddy, but then I got to thinking, boy, what a blessing you all have been to me. Did you know it's a blessing when I see you come through the door? That's a blessing. It blesses my soul. To have fellowship. We need to understand what the true blessings are. Got a roof over my head. Got food in the refrigerator. Amen. Got a little wood in the wood pile. Got a lot of blessings. Some of that stuff the world makes you think blessings ain't nothing but going to get you in trouble. Cause you a lot of heartache. They're trying to bless you with a bunch of payments. They make you want something maybe God never intended for you to have. Blessing means to consecrate by prayer, to invoke good toward. Don't ever take it lightly whenever somebody sets food in front of you. I don't care if you're at the restaurant or where you're sitting. Because your Lord Jesus Christ took five loaves and two fishes and he looked up into heaven and he blessed them. And when he blessed that food, brother, it fed multitudes. And let me tell you something. They, some of this food you eat around in the country needs blessing. 
<laughs> it might hurt you if you ain't careful. But no kidding about it. You know what? You ought to ask God to bless this food to my body and my body to your service. And ask God to bless what you're doing. To bless us, to pronounce a prophetical benediction in favor. Well, if you look in Genesis chapter 27, oh, uh, oh, oh, Jacob, a blessing. Isaac, a blessing. You read them passages of Scripture in Genesis chapter 48, and they laid their hands on them boys. One of them really gets me. He laid his hand. I believe it was Jacob blessing one of Joseph's boys, and he said, bless him with the dew of heaven. Ooh. Ooh. How would you like for your kids to be blessed with the dew of heaven on them? And I'm going to tell you something. I, you know, I'm ashamed that I didn't really understand this in my little kids, but I think, boy, you, you have a new baby. You ought to take that baby before the Lord and just put your hands on it and bless it. Every girl I've got, I walked into their bedroom when they were little infants and laid my hand upon them while they slept at night and asked God to bless them and keep them pure and use them for His glory. Lord, bless them. Simple little things that don't cost you a dime, but it give you the greatest and richest that money can't buy. The word bliss comes from the same root word, bless. If somebody says, I'm a living in bliss, they mean I'm a living in the blessing. Enjoying heavenly favor is to be blessed, to be benefited, and even have an advantage because of blessing. Did you know me having Jesus Christ is a great big advantage to me? Did you know me having this Bible is a great big advantage to me? I know what to do when trouble comes. I know where to go. The Lord has blessed me in so many ways.